So here's an interesting multi-part question that comes under complex numbers, particularly graphs and inequalities with complex numbers. Now, because there are multiple parts to this question, to understand the later parts, you really need to have the earlier parts. So we're just gonna tackle the whole thing from the beginning. The question starts, the variable complex number z satisfies, and then there's this equation here, um, the absolute value or the, the modulus, z minus two minus i equals one. Hmm. We'll come back to what that means in a second. Use a diagram to find the maximum and minimum values of the modulus of z. Okay, so before we start to even answer the question, we need to know what on earth this is even saying because that's kind of the foundation. Um, and then the question that we get asked is based on the, the, the foundation that we build here, okay? So in order to understand what this means, you've really got to have um, a deep, sort of understanding of modulus and absolute value uh, and not just be able to um, you know, sort of crunch the numbers but actually also interpret what they mean. So let's think about uh, a really simple example. Let's go back to real numbers before we uh, get too deep into the complex numbers here. If I ask you what's the absolute value of 3 take away 8? Um, hopefully you're familiar enough with absolute values and just arithmetic now that you could say oh without too much thought that's the absolute value of negative 5 and that's 5. And you would be correct. Um, however, you know, this is an arithmetic way of looking at things and you can see that um, the question itself, even if you didn't know anything else, it tells you to use a diagram and there's this language like triangle inequality. So actually a more useful way to think about absolute value and modulus in the context of this question will be visually, will be geometrically rather than just thinking about the arithmetic. So what does the absolute value of three minus eight mean in geometric terms? Well, it's really about distance. Uh, you know, this idea of the modulus, we connect it to distance in complex numbers, but it's also connected to distance with real numbers. Uh, what this means is, what's the distance from three to eight, or from eight to three? It doesn't matter which way you go, uh, which is why you can just switch the order in there and the absolute value doesn't matter. So to illustrate this, right, you think about what three and eight look like on a number line. If I position zero there, Three there, I guess that would make six about here. So then eight will be a little further along, okay? The distance from three to eight, of course, is going to be this spot here. And if we think about trying to traverse that distance, the way that you find it is, um, you could do just eight take away three, um, but that's the same as three take away eight and then take the absolute value. That distance five is what the absolute value function gives us. So if that's the way it works in real numbers, um, how does it work in complex numbers? Well, if I say to you, what's the absolute value of uh, z take away w in the same way that this is the, the distance between three and eight, um, this is the difference between z and w, it's just that now we're thinking in two dimensions. Um, if you go back to this idea, you know, very fundamentally of the modulus, the modulus of z, um, we really have just a special case of the absolute value. It's the absolute value of z take away zero. In other words, the difference between, or the distance between, I should say, z and the origin, which, which is what we define the modulus to be. So what we're saying here in this particular case is we've got um, a particular value of w being, uh, let's have a look here, this is going to be 2 plus i. Can you see that if I substitute 2 plus i into this uh, line above, what am I going to get? I'll get the absolute value of z take away 2 plus i. When you expand uh, the brackets in here, you're going to get z take away 2 take away i. So what we're saying is the distance from z to this point here, 2 plus i, should always equal 1. What is that? Um, it's a set of points, z, it's a variable complex number z, right? And we know every complex number is represented by a point on the complex plane. And all of those points share this property, that their distance from 2 plus i is going to equal 1. What's the name of the set of points that are all an equal distance from a central point? And of course we know this is a circle. So that's why you're going to get, uh, whoops, that was a partial delete, which I didn't want to do. This diagram here, let's move this up so it's a bit closer to where we're doing our working. Here we go. So here's one I prepared earlier just so that I could do it more neatly and quickly for you. Here is the circle, we might say the, the locus, to use a very fancy word, um, the collection of points, um, that the set of points on the complex pane that are all exactly one unit from this central point, uh, W, which I've designated as two plus I. So uh, you can see this is the radius here of one, and that's why if you think about this, the coordinates of this in Cartesian terms would be two comma one. And so since you're one 
unit raised above the x-axis. That's why if you go down for a radius of one, you, you just touch the axis, your tangent actually to the real axis there. Okay, so now that I have, you go back to the question, a diagram that represents all of those complex numbers z, they all sit on the circumference of this circle, um, I can now answer the actual question they're asking. Use a diagram to find the maximum and minimum values of the modulus of z. The maximum and minimum values of the modulus of z. Now what this means is, um, you know, if I take any point, and I'm just going to, I'll pick one, right? Let's, let's call, here's a point over here. The modulus of z, of course, is going to be the distance from uh, that point right there to the origin. So it would be that distance there. So I could find a different value for the modulus of z if I picked a different point. So here's another point over here. And you can see even on my rough drawing, uh, that's going to be a little bit further away than the first point that I chose. So clearly the modulus of z is variable. Uh, and there is a point which is the lowest value for modulus of z. And there's a point where it's the highest. Now what you can hopefully see if I get rid of those ones there uh, and maybe I'll move this sort of up here out of the way. What you can hopefully see is that let's put this guy in there. Um, where you're going to get these uh, biggest and smallest values of the modulus of z are going to be on the extreme points of the circle in relation to the origin. So if I draw from the origin an interval that goes all the way through the center of the circle, you can see that this spot here is going to be the closest, right? It's sort of like a, you can imagine a perpendicular line. A normal actually is the, the word that we would use. Um, that's going to give you your closest distance. And then this one over here on the opposite side of the circle, going all the way the diameter across, that's going to be my furthest spot. So just so that I can talk about these in a little more detail, let's just give these some names. So I'm going to call this, this close one here, um, let's call that one Z1, and then I'll call this further point over here Z2. All right, so how do I find each of these? Well, even though um, I've now numbered them Z1 and Z2, I think it might be easier to see how to find Z2 first. How do we find that modulus? Well, the absolute value, sorry, have I chosen the right one? There we go. Um, the absolute value or the modulus of Z2, it's comprised of two different pieces. Um, you've got to get from the origin all the way to W. We can calculate that in a second. And then we've got to get from W all the way to Z2. But that there, I'll highlight it in here, that is the radius. And we already know back from, oh, I've got it written here, back from the original equation provided to us that that radius is 1. So if that's 1, then all I need to do is work out the modulus of W, Let's write it in here. The modulus of W and then add 1 to it and I'll have my distance. Now thankfully the modulus of W, I mean we can just use our algebraic definition, you know it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared where x and y are going to be our, our real and our imaginary coefficients here. Um, but because it's just 2 and 1 maybe you can recognize that once you put 2 in here and 1 in here you're going to get a very easy number. This is square root of 5 plus 1. So that is the modulus of Z2, the furthest place that Z can go to on the circumference of the circle. So there's my maximum value for the absolute value Z. To work out the minimum value, I just have to go in the opposite direction. It is still related to this modulus of W, which we already know is root 5, but instead of going past it, one unit, the radius, I have to go backwards. So it's not the square root of 5 plus 1, it's going to be, let's write it down, the modulus of Z1 will be the square root of 5 minus 1 because it's in the opposite direction. So now I have used my diagram, I've interpreted what's going on, and I can say a maximum value and a minimum value for the modulus of Z. I can say therefore, here comes the minimum, square root of 5 minus 1, it's less than or equal to the modulus of Z, which is less than or equal to square root of 5 plus 1. That was the maximum that I determined uh, up here. Okay.